I want to introduce a few of the tools you'll use in this programming assignment. So I'm going to use the divmod file to do this, although we're not going to implement divmod because that's your job in this assignment. Um, I'm going to do one of the examples from the class. So on the right-hand side, I have checked out uh, your starter repository, and I'm logged into IN6. And on the left-hand side, I have I'm uh, logged into the Pi cluster, and I'm in the same uh, same directory. Okay, so I'm going to open up uh, divmod.s over on the right-hand side. And uh, of course, I can't implement divmod like we said, so I'm going to implement uh, the power function we implemented in class today. Uh, so the inputs come in on come into R0 and R1. So we're going to have two inputs. <clears throat> so I'm going to start uh, much like we did in the example of class today. I'm going to start with a, the value 1 in R2, and we're going to have a loop that's labeled. And each time through the loop, we're going to multiply R2 by uh, that value R0. Uh, and then we're going to subtract 1 from R1, which is our counter. Uh, it's telling us uh, how many times we should do the power operation. Uh, and then we're going to uh, branch back to the loop if that hasn't gotten to zero. Uh, and now the divmod program expects that we put the quotient and the remainder into R0 and R1. Now we don't have a quotient and remainder because I'm implementing this sort of uh, different program. But I can put our answer into R0. So R0 can have R2, which is the answer for where the power is. And I'm just going to um, uh, zero out uh, R1. It uh, should be zero already, um, but just to make sure that uh, zero is the value that's here. Okay, so save this. I'm going to uh, run over here. This is the command you'll run uh, to create the binary out of the assembly file you wrote. We've provided you the commands in a uh, make file, so the command you run is make divmod.min, um, and it creates, uh, if we look at what's in this directory now, it created a file called divmod.bin. That's our binary file, and we could xxd uh, divmod.bin, and we'd see the he uh, hex encoding of all these instructions. <clears throat> um, if I make a mistake, like if I, uh, let's say, I forget uh, one of the uh, symbols, like I forget a pound sign in front of a constant, and I run make divmod.bin, uh, we'll get error message from the assembler. So it says, uh, immediate expression requires a dollar prefix, uh, pound prefix, so I can come over here and put the prefix back. Okay, so that's what it looks like to um, do this make. And the runner, much like in um, the first assignment, is uh, available as PA2 runner. Um, and the, the runner expects to be given uh, first a binary file that it's going to use to load things, and then it needs to be told whether you're going to be using. Uh, the divmod or the encrypt or the decrypt uh, option, because there's these three different files, and here we're going to do whatever uh, divmod says, which is to take the two arguments, put them in R0 and R1, and give them uh, to, this, uh, to this file. So let's do 4 to the 5th and see what we get as an answer. Uh, we get 1024 as our answer, and we get 0 as the, uh, the value in R1. So again, this output is expecting that you're implementing divmod, so you should not expect these answers. Don't produce 1024 and 0 for, for uh, divmod 5. Um, but this is an example of how to do this assembly. Now, the other thing I want to do uh, here is talk about the kinds of things that could happen uh, if you've made a mistake. So, for example, what if I typed uh, BEQ instead of BNE, right? Checked the wrong condition. Um, now, if uh, uh, it's worth noting a few things. If I just run this right now, I get the same answer as before. That's because I didn't remake. So always need to um, remake if we change the file. Now if we run, uh, we just get back the answer 4. Uh, we just got back the answer 4 because uh, this BEQ didn't run because the, um, the 0 bit uh, was not set. Um, and BEQ only runs when the 0 bit is set. And so uh, it's uh, I might just read this program to understand it, but there's also another tool we can use for doing this. So there's another command we've made available called pa2debug um, that will give you a bit of a more useful interface for understanding what happened here. So I type pa2debug instead of pa2runner and then these arguments and hit enter. 
Um, at the bottom, it'll say type return to continue or Q to quit, type return to continue. Um, and now we have an environment that's going to be very helpful for debugging. At the top uh, are listed all the values in all the registers. In the middle uh, is your code, uh, your assembly code. Um, and at the bottom are, uh, is an area where you can interact. Uh, this tool is called GDB. It's the new debugger. Uh, and uh, it lets us uh, peek at the running of assembly programs. So the um, main instruction you'll use here to uh, interact, or the main command you'll use to interact with GDB uh, is called step I, which stands for step by instruction. So if you look at this, uh, we are currently at the label called code. We just inserted this uh, symbol called code so that uh, all your code will be labeled similarly. So your code move r2 uh, pound one is at the label code um, and we should see that r2 which currently has some arbitrary value in it we don't know what that is or where it came from it was just the value that happened to be in r2 we should see that value change to one okay so uh, one of the nice things gdb does in this view is it'll highlight what changed so r2 changed to one and the program counter changed to point to the next instruction uh, next, we have this multiply, uh, so we're going to multiply R2 by R0 and store it in R2. Uh, so we can use step I again. There's an abbreviation for step I, just SI, so if we do SI, uh, we will see that R2 now got multiplied by uh, R0, so 1 turned into 4, and again the program counter updated to point to the next spot. Um, so our next instruction uh, is a sub S, so we should have our I on the CPSR here. Um, and we're going to subtract 1 from R1, so we should expect R1 to change, and we should expect the CPSR to change. Okay, so I'm going to stop. Okay, so those things changed. Uh, the CPSR changed to have a 2 in the first hexadecimal position. Uh, so if we think of that first hex position as being 4 bits, uh, that 2 means that the carry bit is set. Um, I'm going to leave it to you to think about the way uh, uh, subtracting 1 looks in two's complement representation for why the carry bit might be set there. Um, but the, uh, one of the things that happened here is that R1 uh, turned into four uh, and it used to have five in it. So we subtracted one from R1. Um, so now if we step again, uh, on a branch instruction, we should always be thinking about what does the branch instruction uh, have as its condition? Well, this one has EQ as its condition uh, the EQ asks if the Z bit is set. The Z bit's not set, only the carry bit's set. So a step just goes right by that branch instruction. Only the program counter updated. And now we just have these last two instructions that clean up at the end. Um, and uh, after this, where the labels stop, right, after code, um, is a bunch of stuff that's in the runner uh, in support code. Uh, we'll be talking about it in the future. Um, but you don't need to worry about it. Basically, once you're past the end of code, it's back into the runner code. And you can just look at the values in R1 and R0, uh, and that's what would have printed out. Um, if we step again, if we uh, uh, use continue to step all the way to the end, one annoying thing about this interface that I, uh, I don't know how to fix this well, um, is that the, the actual printout, like 4 divided by 5 equals 4, uh, showed up up here. Um, not exactly sure how to make that show up nicely down here, but it's pretty easy to inspect the values of R0 and R1 at the end of your program. Um, so that debugging session might have told us that we'd made a mistake here because we expected it to loop back. Um, so then we could come back here, edit our program, and try again. Uh, you can type quit uh, to exit out of GDB at any time, and it puts you back in a regular shell. So that's a little bit about how to use the debugger and the runner for PA2 and interact uh, with these assembly files.